Hey everyone, it's Matt Mover and I'm back and in this very short video I want to talk about Metal Gear Solid 5 and a feature known as PF grade, PF points, PF battles, that's PF standing I think for private force or private military force or whatever, but um, let's go straight into it and show you what I mean. Uh, look at my soldier there looking pretty mean, got all the full armor and everything grade 7 body armor in case you're wondering um, but yeah let's go straight into the PFs before ooh, got a lot of MB coins I need to use trouble is it's just not enough to get a new base but anyway um, let's go into PF grade okay so mob base tab PF grade view PF grades and conduct point exchanges BAM let's see what is going on okay so Every week you get a series of battles against other PFs, um, that's the end of the week, that's the beginning, so if you look at what's been happening, I've been winning my uh, offense, see when you got, if you look at just by the name of the player you're playing against, there's always two battles, you've got one where you're attacking, one where you're defending, so the ones that where the soldiers there um, crouching or you know aiming his weapon, is when you're attacking and the one where there's a base icon uh, the hexagon is where you're defending so uh, essentially if you can see I've been losing all my defensive ones apart from that one uh, but I've been losing all my defensive rounds now a part of what you need to look at is all the information that's displayed on the screen so you've got offensive case capability and durability um, and some more information that explains total development grade and things like that okay quick rundown the main two numbers are the capability and the durability those are the actual important ones whereas everything else really explains what how it kind of helps to explain how you've got that capability and durability but really in and of itself total development grade isn't that important it's more those two figures that are there. Same thing with defensive capability and durability. Those are the two most important figures there. Now, the trouble is Konami haven't really spelled it as 100%. They've kind of they've given some information which I'm going to explain in a second, but um they haven't really 100% explained all the variables. So the information I'm going to give is actually the best information that anyone can give which is off Konami's website itself but they unfortunately don't go to more detail than that um, so so yeah I mean look for example I've lost this round even though my defensive capability and durability is higher um, I've got um, more soldiers uh, everything but I seem to have lost so maybe it's because the person used um, the power-ups the liquid carbon missiles and the anti-ballistic missiles I'm guessing um, which is what I'm using against these people here uh, that gives you a bit of a boost um, you can see the little icon coming up that's kind of like glowing now increases your durability and your capability somewhat um, so that it can be handy um, but even then it, there's not an exact science as in it increases it which makes it more likely for you to win but it doesn't necessarily mean that you will um, so okay what is the whole point of all of this firstly if you press r2 you got the pf point exchange system so the more pf points you can exchange for cool soldiers or um, basically resources which help you unlock some of the things later on in the game so actually it is there is a point to it um, if you press r1 you go to the other tab which shows where everyone's standing um, and you know if you're in the top three you get more bonuses in terms of at the end of the week you get more points that you can exchange for um, those things that I've shown soldiers and whatnot so okay how does it actually work how do you get your PF grade up and all that sort of stuff okay from Konami's own website this is exactly what it says how to raise your PF rating each week your PF rating will increase if you have placed in the top three in that week's virtual league battles so basically 
how to raise your PF rating. So your PF rating will increase if you've been in the top three. Okay. Um, now it doesn't actually say what the benefit of raising your PF rating is, um, but I presume having a higher PF rating and you know as a part of that being in the top three, meaning you get more points, will probably mean you get more PF points to exchange. But that's not really explained, so that's kind of annoying. But basically, yeah, this is what Konami have said. Now, it totally. The next thing that's written about this is it t totally skips that and just basically they go straight into saying, okay, basically um, raising your PF's offensive capability and durability will give you an advantage in the attack phase of the automatic battle. So, okay, now it's talking about the offensive side. All right. So offensive capability is based on combat unit level, combined levels of non-combat unit staff, so everything from R&D and support and intel and medical, okay? So combined levels of that. Your overall equipment grade, the resources owned, so that's nukes, vehicles, fighting vehicles, tanks, armored vehicles, walker gears, uh, how many plants you have, medicinal plants, how many parasite canisters you have. So that's what the offensive capability is based on. Durability is based on combat unit staff numbers, resources owned, so that's processed materials, unprocessed materials, and your GMP. So it's not just one thing, your combat unit um, offensive capability and your durability is based on. It's based on a lot of different factors and it doesn't really mention what factors me like mean more so one thing i've noticed if i seem to have a lot of materials that i've not used then it works it makes my durability and capability higher this is what i've noticed whereas if i start using those materials to say build more platforms or re or develop new sort of equipment or weapons or or whatever i tend to find that because my resources have dipped and my gmp has gone down that that actually works against me and against my pf's offensive capability so i tend to find that sometimes maybe even doing nothing is better for you in this uh sort of area and if i put it another way develop things but obviously only develop things when you have more than ample resources to cover the costs of it from a resource and GMP perspective don't sort of run near to zero because then that's really going to impact you but anyway same thing about defensive capability now so raising your PF's defensive capability and durability will give you an advantage in the defensive phase of the automatic battle here I am reading from the Konami website. So, defensive capability is based on FOB defense level, um, which is, okay, so each individual strut, if you go back to your uh, security settings, okay, so you got FOB defense level. So all of those added together for all of your FOBs and all of your platforms will give you your FOB defense level. Okay, so defensive capability is based on FOB defense level, your security team level, your support unit level, and the combined levels of non-security, non-support staff, like medical, R&D, whatever, your number of platforms, the resources you've owned, so that's nukes, anti-air emplacements, mortars, machine gun emplacements, walker gears, medicinal plants, parasite canisters. Okay, so kind of similar in a way to some of the things that are in combat unit capability. Um, now durability, or when I say combat unit, I mean offensive, but anyway. Now durability is based on security team staff numbers your number of platforms, your resources owned, processed materials, unprocessed materials, number of nukes um, owned, and your GMP. So basically what the website, well, what Konami is saying on their website is 
they're not really specifying exactly how like how points are translated or how resources or values are translated into figures that make up your durability and offensive capability it just doesn't explain that what it says is if you have these sorts of things then it will go up if you have less of them it will go down that's basically what it's trying to say so in a nutshell the point of this video is to explain to anyone who's trying to understand this peer frank and how it works is going to be summed up in me saying have more GMP, have more resources, have more troops, resource, uh, research more items um, and just get as much and more and more as possible just more and more that's it of everything okay and just balance it out um, keep it balanced so don't you know don't um, use all your resources researching things um, trying to take try to take it easy a bit um, keep your resources on a reasonable level um, because that way uh, your durability and your capability is going to go down a lot while you're researching those items and then in that week to two weeks while your resources are so low you're going to pretty much lose nearly everything um, and get no PF points so what's the point of that um, so yeah cheers Konami that's all I can say Konami for explaining that very clearly not um, if you're trying to understand it don't um, because there's no point really worrying about this because it's not like it's going to affect you in any way directly it's just that it's nice to know something about this feature because there is a benefit to using it in that you can exchange PF points for actual um, assets um, you know tangible um, don't know if we can really say tangible when we're talking about video games but tangible assets um, for your mother base um, which enables you to hopefully level up your units and get those grade 8 grade eight and grade 9 if there are any grade 9 items um, developed um, and hopefully make you enjoy the game a bit more that's all I have to say about that um, if you've got any comments if uh, anyone has if anyone a genius out there or someone from Konami is watching this and you know is able to shed more light on exactly some of the real detailed mechanics of how it works so we understand where to focus on more let's say in certain areas um, then that could 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 be helpful if I personally happen to find any more information on this then most certainly I will be sharing it um, and updating to this but as of now as of March 2016 this is the most up-to-date information on PF rank PF grade PF points that there is out there so yeah have fun everyone um, see me again uh, for my next video whatever it's gonna be on um, probably Metal Gear in fact while I'm here I might even play some Metal Gear online so um, if that's the next video that's probably gonna be recorded right after this have a good one Matt Mover out